All right guys, so I'm back now. I'll be working on that coolant temp sensor I said I was gonna work on in the previous video. So here's the sensor. This is a new one. This is AC Delco part. Part number is 1255-1708. This is a temp sensor from a 98 Camaro and a 98 Firebird. So they only used them one year. The big difference between these and the other ones is these have three wires on them. So three of the wires, two go to the computer, and then one goes to the gauge. So they only use these sensors on one year in 1998. So I picked this up on eBay, it was $23. And here is the plug that I got. I actually got the plug from a junkyard. And this is a plug from a, a mid 90s Buick Park Avenue. So it fits wonderfully. A little snug fits in there pretty nice so the plug is from a Buick Park Avenue but this plug is actually pretty common it's used for quite a few things it's also used for the throttle position sensor so worst case if you needed one you could go to the junkyard and cut the uh, plug from a throttle position sensor off or just order one they're like 10 or 15 bucks when I was at the junkyard I got this plug and I brought it up to the counter a couple minutes before close and they gave it to me for free so that was pretty nice and then this was $23. So that was what kind of spurred my decision to actually buy this thing. I didn't want to spend the money on it, but because I got this for free and I didn't have to spend 10 or $15 on the plug, I feel like I got a better deal on this thing. So I just went ahead and bought it and I'm gonna install it, see how it works. All right, so I'm gonna go after this temp sensor now. Pull it off. I got the new one sitting right next to me so I can hopefully get it kind of quick and not spill all the water all over the place. Probably gonna take a little bit. I'm gonna get it loose enough so I can try to turn it out by hand. And then uh, hopefully I can get this in there quick enough. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this like a ninja. Okay. One, two, three, go, go. Holy moly, that almost went too well. It only dropped like 10 drops of water. Maybe that means there wasn't very much water in there. So I'm gonna be careful. I'm tightening this thing back down. I don't want to go too tight. One of the reviews on it actually said that the guy snapped it off because he was using a wrench and actually broke the damn thing. That feels pretty tight. Tight enough. All right. So I think I'll start by just taking the plug, I'm going to put the plug on. So these black and yellow wires, these are what are going to go to the computer. And then this green one is going to go to the gauge. So this is almost long enough to get up to where I need. Actually, I think it might be long enough. So the black and yellow are going to go this way. The green is going to go this way. And then I got a red white wire over here that I'm going to tie into this one. And then these are just going to tie right back into here. So I'm going to take this factory plug. I'm going to snip this one off because I want to I want to keep this piece here. This is going to be down by the exhaust, so I want to keep this little tube dealy. Well, this little split loom with the wrap around it. I'm going to keep that. Pull the wire out. I'm going to try to run the new wiring through this. There's just a little trick for trying to run the wire through stuff. Keep the existing wire in there. And I'm just going to use some tape. Because there's three wires that I'm trying to pull through. Throw some tape around it so it doesn't slide off. Now I got all three wires run through there. So it's loomed. 
I can just go ahead and pull this tape back off. Has that worked out okay? Just gonna go through, attach these wires, figure out <clears throat> the about approximate length that I need. And I'll cut and strip them. Them together to throw some solder on. So that wasn't the right one. But I guess I just pre stripped the other one. How about that? This is going to come through. Here. So these are the two that are going to go to the computer. This is going to go to the gauge. I'm just gonna go through and extend this wire because I need a little bit, a little bit more length. This is gonna come up here. This will be in this loom here. This is gonna come up and over, and then it's gonna connect right to that red white wire. these together get these ready for solder so I may even just leave it like this and test it and see if I can actually get some get some reading on that gauge so let's try that so I'm gonna start it and I'll let it run this will probably be the longest I've ever let it run so I'm just gonna kind of monitor everything and make sure nothing's gonna explode all working I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some solder on these already got the heat shrink set up so I did just run and go get a new uh, little radiator hose for the top so that'll be okay for temporary but I have to figure out a permanent solution for that whole deal Pull the heat shrink over the middle. Hit it with the torch. big torch but well all right so now those are good I'm just gonna throw some loom on it and then uh, that'll be all done plug this guy back in there you go filming this clip after I was almost done editing the video for the coolant temp sensor I did have a I did take a video of it working and it was up to temp for some reason I lost the video I don't have it actually showing the gauge working um, so this is what I'm inserting instead uh, I would just start the engine run it and make a new clip but there's a reason that I'm not doing that and you have to stay tuned for the next video for that one um, so here's the rest of the video all right guys so that wiring is uh, all done for the coolant temp sensor the coolant temp sensor works so that's good to go only thing left would be the oil pressure switch sensor sender. So I got one of those, picked one up for like seven bucks at the auto parts store. Um, so I'll be hooking that up one of these days, but I think my next uh, little project that I want to do is start working on getting the exhaust done. So I got all the parts that I need pretty much for the exhaust. I ordered some mufflers, so they're going to be here in a couple days. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna start trying to pull everything apart and then get the O2 sensor bungs welded in 
and start getting everything set up for putting the mufflers on. So I do have another thing that I want to look at. This issue right here. So uh, this was fully pressurized about 60 pounds probably an hour, hour and a half ago. And now it's at zero PSI. So no fuel pressure left. It's not holding pressure at all. So I think I'm going to keep it just like this. I'm not going to run it again, but I'll pull this out and then prime the pump and I want to see which ones are leaking. This is actually a pretty fast leak. So I'll probably be getting uh, new injectors or something like that. And I know this one back here on the number eight cylinder was leaking, but it was leaking pretty slow where it would, you know, overnight it would be down to like 30 PSI. But now this one seems like it's almost just stuck open or something. So maybe they're dirty, maybe they need to be refreshed, but I'll probably just get a new one or a new old one, one that doesn't leak. So I'm gonna start pulling everything back apart. I'll check that, make sure I can figure out which one's leaking and then I'll start pulling the exhaust and stuff out and get that all situated so then I can actually drive the damn thing. I did start working on the intake a little bit today and uh, that should be almost set up pretty soon. So hopefully in the next week or two it'll be set up where I can actually go rep around on it. Thanks for watching. Have fun. Advanced, so just a quick update to this supposed leak situation. I, I've had this out for quite a while now and I haven't seen one drop. I pulled the valve cover off and I had oil on my hands. That's what those drops are, but there isn't anything coming out of the injectors on either side. So they look pretty good. And it's dropped down to about 30 PSI from 60, 65. So I'm thinking that it's just the check valve in the tank and it's just leaking draining back into the tank, which I'm fine with that. It's, that doesn't really bother me if it's draining back to the tank. So it's as long as it's not leaking into the cylinders, uh, then, I'm, then I'm fine with it, I guess.